video today we'll be going over our plot data button and how to bring in an Excel spreadsheet. So our plot data button is probably one of the buttons that's used most often in the program and this is how you bring in a list of customers or dealer locations or store locations and when you click on it it pulls up our plot data wizard. This first screen just gives an example of what a spreadsheet might look like. Uh, in a previous video we talked about how to set up an Excel spreadsheet and I'll just quickly pull it back up. So in my spreadsheet, uh, the most important thing is to break up everything into separate columns, make sure city and state are in separate columns. I have things like an account name, uh, I have an account owner, I have sales information, I have customer type, I have a unique ID if I want to later use my update data set process. Feel free to throw in the types of data that means something to you. Uh, you can use any of these columns for filtering, color coding, and labeling once we have the data in the program. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna browse we're going to click on from file to pull in our spreadsheet. And so I'm just going to browse to wherever my location is. Just call this customer list too. And actually, I need to close the spreadsheet first. And hit next. Uh, if you have multiple pages to your spreadsheet, you just need to, or multiple sheets, you just need to tell it which sheet you're going to be pulling your data from. This next screen is our address screen. And so if you have the proper headers in your Excel spreadsheet, then the program is able to identify those columns correctly. If you have something like a ship to street address and a built to street address, and the program grabs the built to street address, and you actually want it to be the ship to, that's when you want to uh, choose the ship to from the pull down list. So just make sure that uh, all the columns line up what they should. Uh, you can have latitude and longitude. If you don't, I'm going to just set these to none. Oops. Next page is where we get to select our name. So what happens when we move our mouse cursor over a given point? There's a name that pops up and so you can tell it which column contains the name. Unique ID, uh, that's a column of my spreadsheet that I set up with uh, uh, sequential numbers that don't repeat. And this is used for our update data set process where just real briefly, you can make a change to Excel, come back to the program, click an update data set button. The program looks back to that original spreadsheet and will add or remove the changes. So this isn't required for all spreadsheets, just if you want to use that update data set process. This next section is our callouts. And so whenever you move your mouse cursor over a point, the name pops up, the address pops up, and you can put up to five pieces of information below that. If you want to see a quick, quick glance at sales, you can assign that information and you just tell it which um, column of your spreadsheet that you want to choose. If you don't want them, you can just choose none. And we'll just here. I'm going to click advance now. And this screen is kind of uh, where you go to troubleshoot your data. So let's say that you brought in a numeric column, like my sales. Um, but there's blank values in that spreadsheet, or maybe there's some letters in the spreadsheet. And so the program might initially think that it's a text column rather than a number column. Uh, this might lead to trouble with uh, color coding your data uh, if you're looking to do it by a range because it if it's a text, then it can't do a range. So way to troubleshoot is when you come into advance. If this was set, if you saw the word text right here, then you would just click on the little settings gear, change the pull down list, uh, and make sure that it's set to a number if it's a numeric column. Like I said, you, you don't really need to do that unless you're troubleshooting after the fact. I'm gonna click my plot data button and we'll bring in our spreadsheet of data with our customers and they're gonna be represented all over the screen uh, and our data window will pop up and the data window is just a glimpse into our Excel spreadsheet. This is our data window down here. We're going to get this box that says, do you want to color code your uh, data on the map? I'm going to say no for now because our color coding section is up here. And we're going to show off these tools in a later video. Things about the data window. Uh, if you close it, you can get back to it by clicking on this little thing that looks like a calendar next to the green car. In here, we have a filter. So you can filter by any column of your spreadsheet. So if you wanted to filter by you know, a certain amount of sales, you could do that. Um, we could filter by a certain type of customer. We could uh, filter by a type of state. We could have multiple filters, so keep that in mind. If you need to export the data back out to a CSV, we have our export button at the end. And if you want all of your dots to look the same, uh, but you want to change them, we can change their size here, and we can change their color, and we can change their symbol. Uh, we have a pretty extensive symbol set, but if you want to bring in your own company logo, we have managed custom symbols, and that'll allow you to bring in your own JPEG. 
close out of this for now. And now I'm going to zoom in on a location here and discuss callouts. So we kind of went over how to assign the callout information, but I just want to show you what it looks like. So I'm going to just move my mouse cursor over a point and it pulls up the name, the address and those two uh, callout columns that I chose. So I chose account owner and sales. With a callout, you can either move your mouse cursor over a point and it'll pop up, or you can click on the point itself, click this little plus sign here and expand it out and then that way it'll stay static on the map. And so I can keep doing that if I want them to stay up uh, so I can look at it in more detail. And if I don't like the way that the callouts are positioned, if I move my mouse cursor inside of this box, there's a little settings gear here. And if I click on it, then I can change the orientation so that they're out of each other's way. If you need to change your callout, you're gonna see in our map and data box that our new data set that we brought in is listed here. One thing I'll mention real quick is if you just wanna to toggle it off, you just uncheck the box, toggle it back on and make it come back. There's a little settings gear that if you click on it, opens up a larger box called Manage Map and Data. Manage Map and Data is available for all those uh, different data sets. And in here, one thing you'll notice is you can change the size here. So we can make those larger, you know, change it to anything we want, change those symbols. And we also have our callouts over here on the right-hand side. If I click that callout tab and click Format Callouts, this is where I can alter those callouts. So if I made a mistake or, you know, a week from now I wanted to change it, then I can come in here and I can either remove information or I can add to it. So if I want to leave the account name on there, I can click ch change callouts. And now all that information is up there. If you have any questions, uh, please let us know. Thanks and have a great day.